This is the Pizza and Hummus Podcast. So why would you listen to the Pizza and Hummus Podcast? Am I right, Bada Bing? Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go. I watched Chucky for the first time this week. Yeah. Which one? The very first one. How'd you oh, do? Child's Play? Child's Play, yeah. Dude, that movie tormented me. That tormented me. Here's Watch it again. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. I said the same exact thing. It literally ruined me as a person when I was four or five. Well, and then I watched it again when I was like 17. And I go, are you kidding me? No one thought how much it ruined me. There's like, Rich, you should watch it again as a higher functioning adult. And you'll figure it out. Well, the, it's hilarious. The third one... Because there's there's Child's Play, One. Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, Bride of Chucky. There's think, also Seed of Chucky. Now there's yeah. Cold of Chucky on Netflix. Which is after uh, Curse of Chucky. So the, okay. first oh three, my God. the first three were intended to be scary. Then in Bride of Chucky, they switched and they actually infused more like jokes and stuff like that. And then Seed of Chucky was completely off the rails <laughs> where the kid deals with like some gender issue that what? they have yeah and that one's got like red man and <laughs> so they just like so the way directed it. Yeah. yeah and so that one was like a dedicated comedy and then curse of chucky they tried to bring back the scariness i thought i heard curse of chucky was like the best one and then cult of chucky just got released last week and i know because i always get the torment of these movies you could feel because when I was five, my cousin put on Child's Play 2, and it ruined me yeah. as a person when I watched that when I was five. See, yeah. see I've, I've heard this a lot. I've heard of a lot of kids watching, like, they watch Chucky and it ruined them. And I never I never watched Chucky, and then I saw, because, like, you go to, like, the movie section back in the day when you can go rent movies, and you'd see the cover of, like, Chucky holding a knife, and it's, like, Child's Play, and I'm like, I'm not watching that. I don't want to be afraid of my toys. And then, but then I we, we finally watched it. And I was like, this movie's a comedy. Yeah. Like she get when she gets it, like when the woman gets attacked by a doll, it looks like she's getting attacked by a doll. Like just, she just walk around, swing she's it. And there's this little it. thing like, just throw it. Like, yeah. Well, and, and he's just swearing. It's like, I'm going to kill you, bitch. You fucking whore. And I'm like laughing. Yeah. I'm like, this is hilarious. And then he's got a knife and it's like in the, in the cover of the photo, it looks like this big machete, just evil looking knife. Yeah. He's got like a little, it's got like stripes on it. It's got a little design. It's adorable. It's like a adorable thing. And he's like, walk around. He's like, yeah. And then there's a little bit of a story. Cause he's like, I gotta, I gotta jump into a new body and I gotta transform. And that's how he talks. Cause right. he's like a criminal. Yeah. And he's like, what's going on guys? And you're like, what the hell? There's a, the scariest it lost part. It's creepiness. Like once he officially came to life, like then it lost, it took all the fear and it was just like yeah. this goofy movie. Well, I mean in night in, in 2017, watching a movie from 1991, nothing looks almost good. exclusively oh, hilarious. Yeah. But when it's 94, you're no, like, and you're a kid, and all you know, away. yeah, like yeah. I said, yeah, ruined me. No, no, I, no, I, I agree. It's just, it's funny how, like, you're at that age, and it's like, I've, I've heard a bunch of people, like, they watch, they watch that movie and it messed them up, so I didn't watch it, and then I watch it now, and it's like, huh, it's funny how your brain is just like, oh, this is silly. Yeah. But the thing that's interesting about those movies, I think for the first three or four, they used uh, animatronics. It might have just been like the first three. So like they was actually a robot that scene where he's like coming down the hallway at the end of the first one yeah that's like a four foot robot you mean when he's all burnt yeah that, that was the coolest like part a giant robot and uh because they did that with the ninja turtles too the old ones in the 90s mm -hmm. but now he's all cgi and i feel like, like it yoda looked, <laughs> even though the quality of the movie's obviously worse but i felt like if they could make a decent animatronic now with the quality that we have it might look better because it doesn't look real to me now when you look at it and it's like oh his face is all soft and stuff yeah. like clearly he's cgi'd yeah right. like there's two parts in the first child's play of where he's played by a person yeah every time those two are the scariest parts of the movie and it's just him running and that's it it's yeah just like, run like that and i'm just like i don't like that he's so fast yeah. He's so fast. Oh, he's so quick. Yeah. yeah. He was, if there was like a, <laughs> a scary movie Olympics team, like <laughs> Freddy Krueger would be the sous chef, Mike Myers, shot put, Chucky, 
delivery. Usain Bolt. <laughs> Usain Bolt. Like he yeah. he would just be that fast. Yeah. I mean, like I I guess. Well, Can here's I crack a window. Yeah. Go for it. Oh. Yeah. I mean, my thing is that um. I just thought like like I I enjoyed watching it like I liked it I had I had a fun it was a fun movie I should have watched uh, I never watched Friday the Thirteenth I should have watched it yesterday it would have made sense That's the one with Jason right I think so yeah. It's one of those I don't know I never watched it Was there a bunch of sci fi marathons yesterday No I just we we saw the Cult of Chucky on Netflix mm, mm. and we were gonna watch it and I was like you know I've never seen the first one though I feel like you got to watch the first one because you know sometimes if you watch like a a, a the fifteenth sequel, you can't judge the whole movie on that. Like you got to see the first one that made people go, "Hey, let's make another one." You know. <laughs> I'm glad they can make the the movies again because there was like a like twisted murder in London where you know where he says the "Hi, I'm Chucky, want to play?" Yeah, they there was like these kids that kidnapped a person and like tormented them with a rave mix. <laughs> Of that for hours and like brutally murdered this person afterwards. What? Jeez. Yeah. What kind of what was the genre of music that they used? It was a <laughs> rave mix and it was 90s rave mix oh. of it just kept saying that over and over. And it's literally called like the Chucky murders or something because they said they were inspired by the movie and the creator of the movie had to come out and put a statement out like saying, hey, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Please, it's, like, it's called fiction. Yeah, not, you know, do it. You know, it's not an instruction guide. Yeah, what genre, what genre of movie is this? Do it. <laughs> but I don't know. I I never watched the curse, the the sixth one, because I was like, I can't, I can't do this again. In I 20, can't do 2015. This again. I, I think can't. I saw a part of Bride of Chucky, but that's it. But I, you guys made me want to see Curse of Chucky, whichever one you guys were talking about. That was good. Ish. Well, I heard that Curse of Chucky was good they tried to make it scary again like not that. comedian at yeah. all because seed of chucky i think got terrible reviews mm-hmm. or something like that i'm not sure it, well if you add a kid into any series it's gonna suck yeah tv yeah. show brady bunch you had an extra kid you, fairly odd parents that, it's the last season <laughs> yeah that, that's when you know well fairly odd parents not only did they add a kid then they added a dog and it was just and the dog could him. talk and, and the, dog could the dog just did its own this move this show isn't realistic at all it's a dog fairy thing <laughs> and he's just flying around and i'm like oh my gosh and then now the parents know what or at least the last epi- last I time like i saw this. it the parents know now they know if there's fairly god parents so you it's gotta like know that's the last season if the parents know that's like when skylar finds out that walter cooks meth like, yeah. like well this is the last season for sure yeah <laughs> everything's a back to breaking bad um Speaking of Breaking Bad, you see my my little pop, Walter White, Ooh, right there. I like that. Yeah, I just put these. I just put these shelves up. I'm That's like true. After blend. they uh, after they had a kid, Breaking Bad, it went downhill. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Ted in the waiting room holding the baby. I hate Ted so much. <laughs> He's just the worst. I think we just have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, so, okay. So, so with the wait, fall scary movies, still, yes, there's a movie coming out yesterday that came out yesterday and it's called happy death day. Yeah. I saw a trailer for I that. I really want to see it. It's a groundhog's day, scary movie. So it's this girl, teenage girl, super popular or something. And then she goes through her normal day. And then at the end of the day, she gets murdered by a guy in a mask. And then it's in a baby mask. Hilarious. And then she wakes up at the beginning of that day again, groundhog day. Ooh. And I think the plot ends up becoming she has to figure out who murdered her. I can tell you right now, the guy behind the mask, Bill Murray. It's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks good. I want to see Pulls out it. the mask, a groundhog is <laughs> You're like, oh, I get it. This makes sense. Um, yeah, with scary movies, uh, what was I going to say? Well, that makes sense then because we watched this we were, there was this little thing, like this little blip on the news when we were at like a restaurant. And in the back, it said, happy death day. And my dad was like, happy death day. That's nice. You know, like, he's so mad. You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, this is the world we live in. It's just pure evil, I guess. But now that's like, oh, they're promoting a movie. Right. OK, that makes sense. Um, so <laughs> someone so, bought ad space. So on Netflix, uh, I want to watch it. Kevin Smith directed a movie called Yoga Hosers. And what it is, is it's these girls, these like teenage girls from Canada, and they fight Nazis made out of sausages. 
<laughs> is this animated? I don't know. But I just I'm like, I'm like, he was, he was talking about it. And I was like, I was like, I got to watch it. And he's like, yeah, he's like, it's actually more like a tween, like teenage girl movie. I'm like, this sounds like a movie that everyone should watch. I <laughs> think that this is a, for the like, whole family. I want to watch. I still want to see Tusk. Did you guys hear about Tusk? That's the no. one with the seal, right? It's the one. Yeah. yeah. Where this guy, it's Justin Long, obviously. And he's I'm like, he's, he's, he's like a movie. reporter. And like, he goes to this like rich guy's mansion and the rich guy drugs him and like chains him up. And his goal is he wants to turn him into a walrus. So he's like doing like surgeries and stuff and like making him like learn how to be like a walrus. What? It's like this crazy horror film. Kevin Smith just does what he wants. You're right. And I just want to see like, I just want to see like, okay, like that sounds like a scary movie I could watch. Like something so stupid that's like, okay, you're already saying up front that it's stupid. Right. So now I can watch it. Like I have such a problem with scary movies because they, there's so many that are just so stupid that I'm like, I can't get into it and I can't enjoy it. Yeah. But I loved the the new It movie though. I thought yeah, that was great. Unreal. Yeah, that was the best movie I've seen. The best scary show I've watched lately. Which I, everyone was crapping on it when it came out, but I have to say, American Horror Story season six, Roanoke, was fantastic. It was the most cotton had the most continuity of any of the seasons since Coven. Roanoke or Cult because wow. the new one is Cult. No, I haven't watched Cult yet. But Roanoke was season six. Yeah. And that was the one where they did like the reality TV show mm-hmm. after they did like a like a dramatized version of what happened. Yep. That was amazing. That was great. I see like like in the beginning, I was like, I don't really like this style. I don't like how it's like an interview because like I, I can't get into this in general, like the Destination America shows where it's yeah. just like this guy gets interviewed. And he's like, we walked in and we saw a ghost and then it shows like a reenactment because I'm like, you're alive, though. Yeah. So like, yeah, it makes sense. You're the proof, but you didn't die. So I'm not afraid of you dying. Mm-hmm. Therefore, like, I, I don't know what I could be afraid of anymore. Like, I oh, I d- barely made it out. But you did, though. Like, I've already seen. You already told me what happened. But then they switched it halfway through the season because they had two different. It was either two different writers. That's what it was. They had two different writers and they were just like, here's the premise. Write your own thing and don't tell anybody. So they wrote two different things. That's why, like, and then it switched to. Like, okay, like they just made the show and this is what's going on. And they did that yeah. whole flip. I loved when they did the flip, but I, I wasn't a fan of like the ending and all that. I thought the ending was good. I thought it ended how it should have. Um, basically the closest that it could have. So I don't know. I loved it. I thought it was the best one since Coven and Coven. I, I never thought they would beat Coven. Granted, I haven't watched this season. You think, you think it beat Coven or do you think, think it, like, it beat Coven? You think it beat I Coven? I beat Coven. And I had a ton of hope for Freak Show, but yeah, the only part I liked in Freak Show was the end where he went around and killed everyone. I was like, finally, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, they dragged on for so long, yeah. and then the one guy's like, all right, I'm just going to just murder all the key characters yeah. in one show. And it wasn't even like dramatic either. He just like walked up and just started shooting people, and you're just like, okay. <laughs> like, it was, it was, wrap it up. <laughs> it was done cool with like from the camera angles and stuff. Like it did look cool is basically like but it wasn't like red yeah. wedding like dramatic yeah. like oh no we lost them all it was just like all right it looks like the season's gonna be done soon yeah. they're like oh wow we have two more episodes left like, right. okay and then uh they killed them all the <laughs> end it's like how many bullets i got how many people all right we can do this can do. i don't, have to, the, I don't have to run to the store yeah <laughs> i don't have to, <laughs> run have to, to be really store. accurate <laughs> uh have you guys watched black mirror no, no but everyone keeps amazing. telling me about it's it. It's so on my good. list. I, now, granted, I haven't watched more than three or four episodes, but the ones I have is like, it's so good. Each it's episode's just, it's, it's almost like separate. a Twilight Zone, right? They're separate oh, stories. Yep. They're not all continuity. Like you could you can hop if you wanted, but yep. might as well just start with the beginning. It's great. I think he bangs a pig in the very first one. I don't know. I watched it right in the middle of one of them. One of them was like. Two, first of all, the storytelling and everything is so good that you get drawn in immediately. And it's these two people talking and then it immediately goes into this guy's perspective of his life, telling a story about a traumatic thing of his life. And this guy tells a traumatic thing in his life and you, you go to both those places. And then it turns out that like it has nothing to do with either of those stories. And it's more about their conversation and like why they're both there. It's just great. It's just good. It's just good. I know. I got to I got to get to it because I, I love like the Twilight Zone stuff. Mm-hmm. They were way ahead of their time yeah. just like thinking mm-hmm. just like they're like their their stories and those were just like 
and they're great because they're all like short stories. But I'm like, these are better. These are you know, they're better, well written. They make you think. Mm-hmm. You know, it's they didn't like they. It's it's it was kind of amazing because you know you look at this old movie and you're thinking, okay, like the technology is going to be off. This is going to be incorrect. But like the the essence of what they talk about, I'm like, holy shit, this could happen. Yeah, like, like with the ending of like there's so many classics that people either ripped off or just have referenced of like the guy who's the last man on earth. He finally finds a library and then his glasses break. And that's the ending of the episode. And you're like, how am I supposed to go on after this? Yeah. How am I supposed to just go to the bank? Did now? you ever watch the one with the woman in bandages? Her whole face was in a bandage. And the whole thing was like, she was like, she was like the ugliest woman ever. And she had these bandages and she's supposed to do all these surgeries and all these things. And all of the doctors and stuff, you don't see their faces. It's all in shadow. So you don't know what they look like. And at the end, they unwrap her and she looks beautiful. But they're like, oh, my gosh, she's disgusting. And they show everybody else in the world looks just fucking dis- like ugly. Oh, wow. So the whole world is just that. is ugly. Yeah. And they have like pig noses and stuff. They're like, they're like, and they had to like, she's like, she's so ugly. We have to send her off. To like essentially where like they send off like lepers, like their own separate society. Oh my god. And she's with like this guy and she's like terrified of all the people that are in this society. And like the people are like really good looking, like models to the tens, mm-hmm. you know. But it's it's just like a world where like that's like considered just disgusting and they're ugly. And then like the ugly people are the majority, you know. So it's just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder type of thing, and you know, it's all subjective and all that crazy stuff. But I was just like yeah, what the fuck? there's so many episodes I want to tell you guys about Black Mirror, but I'm not. You guys should just go. Yeah, watch it. I'll I'll watch it. I'll watch it. Twilight Zone is one of the fondest memories I have from high school, Mr. Littaker. You just God put that on. His, God rest his soul. Yeah. Oh but yeah. When it was Friday, you weren't doing nothing. All right, we're putting on the zone. Yeah. <laughs> and then we watched it for the whole hour, and that was. There's three shows that define horror growing up for me: Tales from the Crypt, Are You Afraid of the Dark, and then The Zone. Mm-hmm. In tenth grade, magical, so good. Well, like the Twilight Zone, yeah. Like it, it was definitely. It was a little. It was. It was. It wasn't a thriller. It wasn't a horror film. But it, like, yeah, it did have some like creepy aspects to it because it kind of got you to think, like, well, what if something mm-hmm. like that happened? Like, yeah. what if this was that? Like, it kind of. It was a show, yeah. Like you just after you watch it, you just you start walking around. And you're like, holy crap! What if that? What if that's what's going on right now? Like he's starting. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, what's what's the plan? You know what though? Because he taught English, right? Yeah. That'd be the show. Like, all right, right. good writing. Boom. Boom. Done. Good yeah. writing where I don't have to you don't have to read. It's there perfect storytelling of yeah. the yeah, of the subjective of like because half of it's like half of it is the issue with subjective opinion. There's William Shatner with I see something on the wing of the plane. Yeah. There's I can't read, I'm the last man on earth. I'm ugly, but I think I'm beautiful, but I'm not beautiful, but now I'm ugly, but I figure out the yeah. beautiful. It's all subjective and it's that's all we know. Mind blown. Mind yeah. blown. Do you guys remember the toy one? There was yeah, one of the, these. The, the, how could I forget? The doll yeah. who talks, who says, I'm going to kill you. Well, there's that one, which it's inspires Chucky inspired and inspired everything. Chucky, yeah, yeah. Like that was like a big one. And you know what? Because I remember when I watched that one, they were just like, yeah, this is kind of the thing that kind of started off with the talking dolls. That was creepier. Yeah. That was more terrifying than than all than the Chucky, oh, all yeah. of them. Well, the, the Chucky story comes from Robert the doll. Do you guys know what that is? No. Tell me so more. in the 1900s, which Amazon just did a thing called uh, Lore, where one of the episodes fo- focuses on dolls and stuff. And basically, I don't know if you guys would like it because it does like that documentary side with some dr- dramatic stuff, but it wasn't really that scary or anything. But Robert the doll was a doll that was delivered to a kid named Robert Gene something. And Gene, they he started going by Gene and he named the doll Robert. And all this crazy stuff started happening in the house. And he would say every time something happened, he'd say, no, Robert did it. And then they were like, all right, we're 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 done. We're putting the doll upstairs, whatever. And so then whenever the parents would like shit talk the doll with the kid down there, they'd start here like footsteps, like running around up there wow. and all this stuff. And then apparently... Uh, after they sold the house, they left the doll up there and they could hear like giggling and stuff like that. And then the lady donated the doll. And so now it's in a museum in Florida where they have like a caretaker for it. But if people like come up uh, and like shit talk the doll and stuff, apparently they can get like cursed and stuff if they piss it off. 
And so, like, people, like, send letters in, like, begging to be released from a curse and stuff what? like that. People this, leave wow. people leave candy for it. This sounds exactly like the real story of Annabelle. Yeah. Yeah. The Annabelle one where they have the... Minus every the Every day, I guess, the priest goes in and does a little exorcism yeah. on it. He and blesses stuff. Annabelle. It's kept in a case every single day. Yeah. Uh, or it's blessed by a priest, like, once a month. And, and like, the real one it looks is, like, a raggedy it's Annabelle. It's a raggedy Annabelle. It's not, like, the creepy, like... They showed yeah. a picture, and I was like, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just they didn't want to ruin don't. the Raggedy Ann brand, so That's they're like, true. "We just let's just make it this creepy doll that no one would really buy." Right. That's, that's the first you just thing. Don't when mess I'm watching. with dolls. No, I don't you like. Don't it. You don't get dolls. dolls. No. You don't yeah. buy dolls. You don't look at dolls in the eyes. Yeah. Well, it's like my my grandma. She would have like all these like decorative Everywhere. dolls in her yeah. house. Yeah. It yeah. was like my grandma has that, and my great grandma was even worse. Just the whole, excuse me, the whole house. Yeah. With yeah. dolls. If Annabelle, and they're just looking at you, here? just a bunch of eyes. Yeah. If Annabelle came out in the 1950s, they would have to shut s- entire cities down because yeah. dolls were actually prevalent back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like like I get like when they're a little girl and they got they want a doll because they want to be like oh they take care of it and they feel you know they feel like they're kind of like this this little independent thing and they love the dolls. Playing with the doll, I think is that's is, okay is, is okay this is like but, but, but they're they're collecting them and there's just a whole wall of them or like a corner of them and they're just looking at you mm-hmm. you can't touch them they just they just look at you they're touching you with their eyes yeah and it's like whoa like if it's like oh this little girl has a little doll in her toy box okay but you got a, adult women like far i'm like either she's lonely or they're telling her things <laughs> and they're all in like First communion dresses. No yeah. one's in like a sundress yeah. or a bathing suit. It's like my uh, my child of Prague. That right there. Or all of them. But that's Jesus though. So that's so different. He's fine. He's, he's fine. He's wearing a crown. I like. He's it. wearing a crown. He's got the nice. You know, what, actually, he's, he's looking right at me. Like he got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> he's looking at you. We had a doll. Get your hands up. <laughs> we had a doll in our house when we moved in, and I was like, "Got to go. We, yeah, we gotta go." I was like, "It's got to, go. to go." You know what though? I'm trying to think about this because now we'll think about the Twilight Zone episode with the the doll. The part that was cool about the doll was since they were essentially limited, they couldn't, they didn't make the doll really come to life. The doll would talk and it would do all this stuff. And that's what kept it creepy. And in the beginning of Chucky, it was kind of creepy because you saw the doll and then you would like see it like pop up in different areas and it would like talk. When, once it came to life, it then got kind of silly. I, I think as a kid, it got crazy. You know, it was probably terrifying, but I'm like, I wonder if they did that almost like Jaws where like they don't reveal the shark. So it makes it more terrifying if they would have did that, like keep that creepy, like yeah. the paranormal activity vibe. Yeah. Like, like yeah. kept that type. Well, of I mean, thing. they did that with Annabelle. If they show the Annabelle doll running, I'm not scared anymore. Were you running at me? I'll kill you. Yeah. You're like, a doll. Like, I'll I just drop you. kick you. I'll, yeah. But if you see you it, don't just stand like, a chance. it just keeps <laughs> popping up everywhere and it's looking at you and it's saying That's stuff. scary. And then you see like blood on the walls. And you're just like, oh, like you can. This is some supernatural shit versus just like you're running like, I'll kick you. I wonder if they will put you in the fire. (laughs) I will set you on fire, Yamanashi. I wonder if they realize when they were making Annabelle, they're like, yeah, we are making uh, hopefully a better version of Chucky right now. And so like, if they watch it, be like, okay, where'd they go wrong? Oh, he called her a bitch. We should probably not do that. Yeah. (laughs) Everyone laughed. They didn't take it seriously. Like, oh, he's evil. They were just like, haha, he called her a bitch. They're like analyzing focus. The thing, the thing about trailers now for these horror movies and stuff is sometimes the trailer or most of the time, actually, the trailer is more scary than the movie. Yeah. So like the last Annabelle movie, I watched a trailer for it. I was like, I'm not going to see that. And then I thought about it and I was like, I probably could see it. It's probably not going to be scary. But the part where she's just rocking in the chair, just not doing anything. I was like, girl <laughs> i was like you better not haunt my house <laughs> yeah yeah that part sucked same yeah. same goes with comedies too like a lot of times you'll see a comedy trailer and you're like oh that looks hilarious but then i'm just like all the jokes are right there yeah. i'm already done yeah and i mean we usually with a really good scary movie the trailer doesn't ruin any of like the quote jokes the scary parts yeah but like i was upset with annabelle the scariest part of the movie would have been the part where she sees a the door, the two doors are open, and the woman sees a little girl who's not supposed to be there in two rooms away, and the little girl starts starts running, and then as she starts running, the door slowly closes, and when the door closes just enough to cover the girl, an an, an adult who's been like all bloody busts through the door. Yeah. So it's like it looks like one shot, one running, and it's the scariest part of the movie. But I saw it in the trailer, and I was like, I saw that coming. Yeah. It would it would have ruined me. If yeah. <laughs> that part, but it didn't. Yeah, no. Yeah. See, that's so loud. I like it. It's like a, it's like a bowl. 
<laughs> it's like soup. <laughs> Look at that. It's crazy. Got a bullet. Chunky. So, so what's your guys' favorite? When you try to think, like, what's your favorite scary movie? Since we're talking, you know, it's October in hype. Conjuring. Conjuring. Mm-hmm. I've never watched a Conjuring because it. James Wong, as much as some of the movies that he's been involved with are, eh, that guy, he's like, he's like our reinvented horror guy lately yeah like he's been killing it he with is everything so why not watch yeah it? So, so far you're convincing like what? i really want no, to watch it that's again, why that's why i can't watch it is because i know the conjuring the the spirits and stuff so like the slasher films okay those aren't scary no. anymore so like the redid version i think we went to see it right the nightmare on elm street did that go we with you? we saw no you didn't go with me but we saw it like i think the same like week okay and then we talked about yeah. it yeah the redid version of that was not scary at all. Yeah. Like you could watch the original ones because like slasher films are not. But now that 2017 horror is like, all right, it's all spirits. That's it. Mm-hmm. And that freaks me out. So the conjuring I can't do. But I would say that the probably the best horror movie, I, I have to throw the the new it out there yeah. because that was the best one I've seen. That probably had the forever. Best, yeah, yeah. storyline. No, yeah, I thought. Well, say I love that. I love when they have like just a really cool story because then I get really into it, and then I my my inner filmmaker like dissolves, and I just kind of take it in, and that's when you scare me. Like right. that's when you get at you me. let your guard down. Yeah, I let my guard down. I'm not looking at like, well, why did they do that jump cut? Why did they do this and that? You know, like it gets me in the moment, and then when it pops out, then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like it yeah. scared me. I'm so ingrained into this story, and uh, I sound like I sound like a I sound like a pompous asshole when I say that. But it's just <laughs> well, no, no, but, no, 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 but it's true. just it's just that's hard because when I was bef- like before I made videos and stuff, I was terrified of scary movies. Like I remember kids in sixth grade were talking about like Halloween, and they were talking the about ring. Friday the Thirteenth, The Ring, and all that stuff. And I was like, nope, never seen a scary movie. I associate with reality. I can't do it. And then, like, once I started taking filmmaking class in 10th grade, then all of a sudden it changed because then I was, like, interested in, like, well, how do, like, how do they make you scary? Like, besides just having a scary image. And then I started watching scary movies and I was like, oh, I'm like, this is really interesting. And then there's a lot of stupid scary movies that are just trying to, like, jump out at you all the mm-hmm. time. Like, it just goes quiet. They increase the bass. Then it goes silent. And then it pops up. Right. Or you hear, like, a high pitch sound and yeah. then it goes silent and then it pops up and you're just like okay like once you get that rhythm you're just like i i followed it you know yeah so but when you get into scary movies like when i watched when i watched the new nightmare on elm street i didn't watch the original one and i was like oh this is pretty good you know i'm like it looks kind of cool and whatever and then you were like it's horrible it's you know whatever i'm like well if it's bad maybe i should watch the first one i watched the first one i was like oh my gosh the new nightmare on elm street was terrible like this is amazing like yeah. it's super creepy it's super awesome the only thing i would do is i would if they had the technology, I would switch the two endings because the ending of the original one was like they go in a car and it's like the same color as Freddy Krueger and they drive yeah. away in the new one. fucking blast his uh, yeah. knife hands through her face. I was like, what the hell? If they would have switched that, but they couldn't because it was the 80s. They would did that. It'd be the best. Did yeah. you ever watch the last Wes Craven one with, Is it where uh, his face looks different? Uh no the the one's face looks different was the newer one okay there's one that Wes Craven did I believe in the nineties or the, maybe the early two thousands I've only those are the only two Nightmare okay. on Elm Streets I've seen there's a because there's a ton that Wes Craven did and I think it's called like a new nightmare or something but basically they go and they take the actors from the old Nightmare on Elm Street movies and they play fictionalized versions of themselves. So it's like, oh, you were such and such character, but they're the actual, they go by the actual actor or actress's name. And it's like, oh, okay, well, now they're doing interviews, they're talking, they're trying to hype up the next Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And then Freddy Krueger comes back and starts haunting them in real life. Oh, that's a great plot. Oh, my God. (laughs) I was like, I was like, how does this one not like up there? With the other ones, because this just like reinvented the whole. Like, yeah, he's here now. Right, he's here. This is our universe. Yeah, we let yeah. our guard down. Yeah, that's the key. Well, kind of like the Roanoke thing. Yeah, where like you watch his little documentary thing, but then it's like no, like this is a real thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of, yeah, it adds another, yeah. another layer. I like I it. I was like, damn. Not to go off the thing too much, but like, I'm really starting to realize how similar comedy and horror is mm-hmm. of like, nothing's less scary than saying, this is going to be scary. And nothing's less funny than saying, this is about to be funny. Mm-hmm. It's, it's whether you're starting off with, this is a happy family. Everything's going smooth. This might be the whole movie as far as you know. Your guard gets let down. You're comfortable. You like the family. You're getting attached. Oh, this one's got a speech impediment or whatever. Yeah. And then it starts and you go, I knew it. Every single move, every single horror movie, I go, oh, I forgot. <laughs> every single time. And the same thing with a comedy is, oh, I'm just a normal guy talking. I let my guard down. I'm just like you. Oh, oh, this guy isn't trying to trick me. Basically say the comedic version of boo. Yeah. He's just... <laughs> Hanging out, one of the, and then he says something. I go, I knew it. You're telling me jokes <laughs> every single time. But yeah, I just want to. Yeah, it's. I, I don't think this is the best comparison, but to me, it feels like a country rap type of situation. You know, like like country country and rap. They feel like their genres themselves are like so extreme. Indifference. Indifference. But no one's ever like, I like every movie except horror and comedy. Like, you don't hear that type of no. situation. Like, you say, oh, I listen to everything except country and rap. Those uh, are the ones that are excluded. Yeah. 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 But it's just like, I feel like, yeah, like comedies, it's like, it's always bright. It's always what's colorful because that's what it is. That's the genre. And then you have like the horror film. It's always going to be dark. And it's weird. I don't know. Like, it's, it's, it seems like they're, they're two, like both extremes. Like, you can watch a thriller or a suspense, or a drama, or whatever, and you're pretty much in the medium field. Like, you might, oh, I feel really bad for this guy, or yeah. that, but there's no extreme. Comedy is like, I want you to laugh out loud. Horror is like, I want you to scream out loud. Yeah, like both they're, they're both trying to force, yeah, involuntary thing, whereas the other ones, like the other type of movies, is like, oh, it's like a slow progression, you're just kind of watching it to relax, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you can be on your phone at the same time, or do whatever. Whereas like these two, they're like, we need you to force these type of emotions. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched Dale and Tucker vs. Evil? No. no, but everyone always talks about it. That <laughs> is the it's it's largely a comedy. But if you were gonna perfectly combine comedy and horror, boom. Really? Because you just have to watch it. I'm not gonna tell you anything, but the parts where you you're like wow they're like really milking the horror part of this and then like something will happen and it's just gut wrenchingly hilarious. <laughs> Guys got to watch. It. Okay, that is a funny yeah. movie. I know I'll it's on. I, I believe it's on Netflix. Yeah. Well, you were saying about how the new standard for scary movie is uh, demons. Yeah. Is I'm starting to catch that, aka my guard is getting slowly put up from that because now and it's it's like it's like clockwork. First you go in happy family. And then things start happening. Spooky stuff starts happening. And then they invite a priest or some sort of uh, religious dude in. Yeah. And he sits down and he goes, "Um, you're going to want to sit down for what I've found in the house. He goes, he goes, this is blah, blah, blah happening. And the lady will go like ghosts. He goes, no, not like ghosts. What we have are demons. Yeah. And then he defines demons. It's been defined in every movie. Yep. They've never been real. They've never been of this earth. Yeah. But they want to latch on to your child. And yeah. then they cr- turn <laughs> British. And then and then the dad doesn't believe it. And then and then he finally believes it and the movie ends. It's every single time. So now the second the guy comes in, I go, here he comes. It's not ghosts, it's demons. And I go, <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Which is why I liked Insidious because they had yeah, their own That was so good. They had their own realm. It was like yeah. they're not they're not with us. They're trying to pull you to them. To them, yeah. They're not trying to be here. They want you. They want you in their house making pancakes. They want to make you. They a want pancake you to come slave. to them and deliver yeah. the pizza. Besides yeah. the new it movie, that was like the last scary movie that I was like, "This is my jam right here." Yeah, yeah. I I thought that movie was awesome, and plus two, it was like like with well, one thing I love about Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that, like it has to do with your dreams. That's everyone has dreams. as a kid. Scary movies, the worst part about them, the reason why I was like, nope, 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 was not because of like the real world. I can just turn on all my lights. I'll be fine. It's when I go to bed and I go to sleep and I go, I'm going to have a nightmare about this. Yeah. I'm confident and I'm not going to know what's real and what's not. And I'm going to be terrified. So I'm like, so it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. So if you make a movie about your dreams and how demons are pulling you or how a guy with knives is coming to cut you and then you die in real life. 
now we've got a whole new level of what I'm yeah. afraid of. That's like with, um, like when you're saying with your dreams, and I don't know real from reality, that's what one of my top probably five or ten favorite scary movies was. It's on Netflix. It's about a mirror, a big mirror. Um, I'll, I can look it up real quick. It's it's fairly new. I recommend like a it. black mirror. No, <laughs> very similar though. No, and basically, it's when you look at the mirror, you don't know. You continue the movie continues, uh, and but you're not sure if this part of the movie is their basically hallucination of what's happening or not. And so, and so basically, the mirror will mirror is killing these two, trying to kill these two people or killing people because it basically possesses you and you basically black out and you're, while you're, it's, it's, it's a total mind. Is it F. Oculus? Oculus. I could not recommend a movie more. It blows your mind the whole time. Cause you don't know what's real in the movie, what's not. And then they come out of it of like the, the blackout. They're like, Oh, none of the last 10 minutes of the movie didn't actually happen. And, and they huh. were like right about to get sh- killed or the mirror just tries to kill them by basically putting their mind on idle and like distracting them with their own hallucinations and damn like the woman th- thinks she kills her boyfriend and she goes to it, it's 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 ridiculous i'm gonna just check that you out. have to watch it i think besides it so insidious was probably the last one that really scared me especially the at the end credits when yeah. she blows out the candle that that like mess with me because yeah. uh, we're all we're at kurt's house we're all watching it and then we're all talking like, oh, my God, the movie was so scary, blah, blah, blah. Then it came back and we were like, why did no one shut the DVD off? Why are they here? <laughs> They're here. Why is she blowing out a candle? And I drove yeah. home in the daylight petrified. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and but uh, Sinister was good. That was good. That was scary. Um, but I think probably from when I was younger, another movie that messed me up for a while was the first Jeepers Creepers with Justin Long. <laughs> that I movie that was late. terrifying for yeah. me. Yeah. And then the second one wasn't as scary. You're telling me Jeepers Creepers 2 wasn't a blockbuster no, hit? No. <laughs> but you know what? I think with, because uh, we were talking about that, you know, how they're all milking the demon thing. Mm. Now, they're still making movies where they've got, you know, a killer or something like that. Because there was like, I think one that was called like You're Next. I watched that. Uh-huh. Not scary oh, at all. Oh, was that with like the wolf mask? Yeah. yeah. Not scary at all. Yeah. Basically, they were just hunting these people. But you know what movie was really good back in the day? It was The Strangers. I was just going to say that. The Strangers. It's one of my and favorite And they're supposed to be movies. making a second one. And I'm like, why didn't you make the second one like two years after the first one? It would have been an international blockbuster because <laughs> of how great the first one I was. I love that movie. You know the ending to The Strangers? Because you're home. Oh, man. Oh, because you that's, were home. That's the best thing. That's the worst. No motive. I'm not a sociopath. They, they are. But like, it's yeah. just like. The best nothing ending, personal. but the worst <laughs> thing that could have happened. That's the. Because you know they're dead. You know they're dead yeah. after that. There's nothing you can do. There's, you, you're not going to give me money. I just wanted to kill you. The Convenience. Sh- the shotgun scene. Which, wait. Where she or someone's in the closet with a shotgun. Oh, and she kills that other yeah. guy? Oh, my God. Oh. Did you guys see Get Out? Yeah. No, I, I didn't. love that. I, I feel like you would have loved it. I love that But I movie. feel like you loved it. Like, I love the comedy aspect of it. It's so funny. And then, okay, here's, yeah. I, I, you, I should just let you talk, but just, like, the reason why, I don't know if you this is why you think I love it. Just the part, I just like getting my mind blown when she's just doing with the tea, and I've never been more vulnerable and, like, like I'm... I'm in, I'm sitting on the chair right now when she's yeah. stirring the tea and then she goes sink into the floor. I sunk into the floor. Yeah. <laughs> that room. I know. I just loved his friend. He'd be like, this bitch crazy. What is it? <laughs> our, our, what is it? Uh, something Howery? Our, I, I know he's a comedian. I, yeah. And he's so funny. Yeah. I was like, I was like, okay. Cause it's like, oh, written by. You're snatching up black people. <laughs> <laughs> I believe white people are kidnapping black people and hypnotizing them <laughs> that he's saying to the police force that they're just like, and, oh my God, that was so good. But that was the whole plot. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. <laughs> but then it, uh, why was that so good? I had, a, I had a whole thing of like why Get Out was so good because of that. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's so like not so supernatural but it is at the same time of we're just like, it's like, 
like if if racism was like 20th century technology racism yeah. of like, well, yeah, we can just hypnotize you. I was watching it with somebody. No, nah, I wasn't. Wait, I was. I was watching it with somebody because I've seen it like three times. And they were like, you know what's scary is this could really happen. In my head, I was like, no, it couldn't. But almost. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's scary. <laughs> All you See, the problem is that they didn't have the nice chain watch that they could put in front of them and be like, look at the watch. Yeah. You're getting sleepy. <laughs> Oh my god! I didn't understand. I guess I didn't understand a lot of it. Um, so they're hypnotizing them, and then they wanted them in their body. So then they were gonna do a brain transplant. Yeah. And then like, they're there. I don't know. Now was, for me, I didn't see it coming. A, mo- a lot of people said I saw it coming from my life. I didn't see it coming. It literally got revealed to me when they were doing the silent auction, and then it slowly panned to uh, the main character's picture that they were auctioning him off. Against yeah. as well. That's literally what I was like, what? But I didn't know if it was for hypnotizing. I thought it was like they were going to like hunt him or kill yeah. him. Like, you know, because you knew it was a horror film. So I was like, okay, like, are they going to secretly kill him or like, what are they going to do? I don't know. I, I had, I had mixed feelings about it. I kind of leaned towards like, this felt more like a comedy yeah. than an actual horror film but like yeah the sunk to the floor part i thought that was cool and that's kind of like the big thing in the whole movie I'm like, oh, yeah. like that's a really cool way of doing that and i thought know, take that taking that twist of hypnotism that. being the scary part was unique here's what i here's good. why here's what i didn't like about it i didn't like how they were just like okay so they, they put them in that thing and they go all right you're gonna be hip you know we're gonna hypnotize we're gonna put you in your body whatever so they start doing brain surgery on the other guy right the other so 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 the main character isn't in there and they're they're doing brain surgery. They're cutting out his brain and they're just like, where, where are we going to put this? So then the main character goes in and just starts killing everybody and beating them all up and fighting his way out. And then he like kills them and all that stuff. I'm like, wouldn't you think they would have put him down? Like if you're going to do a brain surgery, you're going to switch brains because essentially what they did. They switch brains. You'd have them both in there, drugged up, asleep. Yeah. No, there's like, all right, we're going to start surgery on this guy. I'm just going to kind of juggle this brain until he comes in. Like that part <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. like. And then, and then he fights his way. And then I wish like the ending was hilarious because like his friend pulls him up that and he's sucked. just like Wu Tang Clan enough to fuck with like whatever. <laughs> but if he would, if they would have like, cause he originally was like a, a police officer. If he would have got arrested as a police officer, I would have been like, Oh, that would have been great. Cause that's like a horror film. Like it ends bad. That would have been the worst. I would have probably, boycotted the whole movie <laughs> yeah i would have made a sign i would have been outside of a blockbuster justice for Lindsay. <laughs> i don't know i don't know i mean but now your fiance she doesn't like scary movies right no like 100 not, not in the weber household uh, that's a non she's not allowed to watch gilmore girls <laughs> i'm not allowed to watch horror movies two rules L- about the tv hey listen listen <laughs> listen gilmore girls was there's Citizen Kane. <laughs> Dude, I've, actually, I've actually watched every episode of Gilmore Girls. Dude, I was seven episodes Marriage. in. Seven episodes in. I was like, I can't take this anymore. I was like, how do they not know that they got it okay? <laughs> They're going to be all right. You're in a prep school. So what? You were late for the test. You failed. It's not going to ruin your life. You know, at that you got time, a good life. You think never leave. <laughs> got a good life. Well, with that show, we're, we don't get too deep into Gilmore Girls. But if you didn't like that, then you're not going to like the rest of it. Because then she like goes off to college and then she just she goes from like, I'm this smart, innocent girl to I'm just going to make a bunch of stupid decisions all the time. And then the mom is is so selfish and whiny the whole time. She's just like, how come no one loves me? Because you don't love anyone else. Like I, yeah. you know, like she's just, she's very self-centered and she like, she loves going after her mom and her mom's like, I've literally given you billions of dollars. Just be nice to me. And she's like, no, I don't want to, <laughs> We, I don't want to do that. Ange and I had to have a conversation <laughs> for like probably 20 minutes about how we should just give stranger things a try because that was almost too scary. That was almost nixed from the Weber household. <laughs> But wait, stranger through wait, that one. Stranger Things. What am I? The TV show on Netflix with the kids. Eleven. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's some parts that are creepy in that. That was almost. I don't know if I can watch this. It's like that's so weird. Because yeah. like my wife has a very unsettling obsession with scary movies. Yeah, most like she she get. I think she gets like a little excitement of like oh like a like a damsel in distress yeah. type of feeling. I don't know. I could be wrong, but she like loves to watch. Anything with demons, blood, 
murdering people, everyone's dying, terror. It's a roller coaster for your brain. Yeah. yeah. Like for me, I don't like I don't really like even there's even times like let's say the story's good and all that. Sometimes I'm like, if I'm watching someone getting brutally murdered, I'm like, what? Is this like go back to like the Coliseums where we used to watch real people get murdered? Like, why is this entertaining? Oh, yeah. Like we're watching this is this is terrible. We shouldn't be supporting like we're paying money, like, yeah, I want it to look like they're murdered. But make sure it looks really realistic so I feel like they're getting murdered Something deep brutally. in my brain didn't believe it last time. Can you trick me to make sure I know I saw someone's life fly out of their mouth? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I just, I need to know. I need to see a ton of blood. Like, there gets a point I'm just like, holy crap. I'm like, why are we watching this? This, is, this questions yeah. our humanity a little bit. I think it defines it. Yeah. It probably <laughs> does. You know, I don't really mind, though, because, like, scary movies still mess me up as an adult. So, like, it... I watched the one from the 90s. That one was, like, scary. And I watched that when I was younger. And I was like, there's going to be a clown. He's going to haunt my dreams. I didn't understand the story of why he was scary and why he could just be anything. And then when I watched a new one, as a 26-year-old adult, I was like, let's leave some of these uh, fake candles on for the night just so we, we have a little bit of light. Some of this fake like, candle I like, I was like, yeah, these battery-powered uh, candles will make it through the night, right? You're just in Shut the kitchen the door, with a safety blinds. lighter lighting yeah. like trick birthday candles. Yeah. <laughs> like, these so, don't get blown out. So I don't mind that she, like, is not a fan of horror movies, but I think the funny thing is, is we were scrolling through Netflix the other day, and she's like, oh, I've seen that movie because, like, you know, she wants to she wants to prove that she's seen a scary movie once in her life. And I was like, what one? She's like, that one. And I was like, The Village? <laughs> Lady in the Water? <laughs> she's like, yeah, The Village. And I was like, I don't know if that really counts. It's a scary movie. I think that's just a bad movie. I mean, the trailer was scary compared yeah. to the actual movie itself. The thing with the pigs... That's that like movie. that's like that's like being like, who turned out to be fake. They're not even real pig people. It's like I'm such a Stephen King fan. What's your favorite movie? The Mist. Cujo. <laughs> yeah, Cujo <laughs> with the dog. Dude, I had a, we had to shut that off halfway because it was so annoying. It's just 40 minutes of the kids screaming as the dogs barking, and yeah. he's in a car. He's in a car. He's like, bah, bah, and you're just sitting there for like. Can this dog just kill him now? Like, let's well, take <laughs> yeah. it. Like, he's just screaming. Just and shut just... the kid up. It's like it's like Baby Mario in Yoshi Island too. <laughs> I thought right. you were gonna say Baby Mama. I agree. That was annoying. <laughs> Honestly, I've never read the book, but how do you write I, bark for thirteen yeah, pages? How, how was this published? <laughs> like, I don't know if it's a short story or a novel, but how do you write anything about like hey, this dog is? If it's not under five hundred words for the whole story. Of the dog mm -hmm. and them, I don't understand how you can maintain fear. But hey, that's why Stephen King means I, makes a big bucks. I guess so. Scares people. By every the dog time named a new separates him from us. <laughs> every time a new Stephen King movie comes out, every single time there's like some garbage BuzzFeed article. They're just like Stephen King hated the fact that this got turned into a movie. Did he? Does he hate having a billion dollars? <laughs> he hated that 20 years later this got turned into a movie where he didn't have to do anything. Did he? Here's an interview where he said, yeah, I wish the ending was different. He hates it. <laughs> Every single movie, it's never not happened. Have you guys ever seen Misery? No, but I know what you're talking about. That's the one. Uh, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates. She yeah. won an Academy Award for it. So. Is that the one where she gets um, the guy, he's like a writer. Mm -hmm. and then yeah. he gets My sister... She says that's just, that's her favorite like scary movie of all time. Yeah. Her favorite scary movie is Misery, starring Kathy Dude, Bates. It's pretty probably unreal. is it it's pretty unreal. Is it? Well, then yeah. Then she said she she absolutely loves it, and she keeps telling me to watch. Is it on Netflix? I don't know. See, that's it's the thing. Like, no if it's way. not on Netflix, you, yeah. you can't watch. it. I'm not it. gonna rent Misery with Red Kathy Box. Bates. Where's the also, nearest movie gallery? <laughs> also, you know, uh, you know the guy that played Walter Hobbs in Elf? family video. Walter Hobbs, yeah. His name's, I think, James something. Con. Yeah. With 32 A's. He stars opposite of Kathy Bates of Misery. As the guy with that his was legs his, broken? Yeah, that was his comeback movie. Because well, he had like a drug addiction and stuff. So Misery was James Con's no comeback movie. And then he's like. It's his assistant king. He's like, eh, I'm just going to do Elf. <laughs> <laughs> I got this, right? <laughs> I want to make sure that's actually his name. It is. It's James Con. Are you sure? Unless his last name is Con and it's not James. Con man, the con man. Yeah, that's what we call him. James Con Man Twitty. P Diddy Con Man. <laughs> P Diddy Con. Um, con Man. What was I gonna Listen say? Listen to that Horror beard. Movies. Listen to that beard. Shake, shake, shake. 
Yeah, but yeah, no, I it's it's just weird because, like I said, like there's there's a new horror movie coming out. Like my wife, she's like, I gotta, I gotta go see it. I gotta go see it. I'm like, it looks stupid. Like it's done. <laughs> oh, a a ch- a child in all with all white skin with dirty fingernails is coming at you. Okay, <laughs> like it's always happened. Kick him in the face.